The season of Easter is about transformation and change. And there's a lot of that going on around us. Uh, it's the beautiful springtime season of the year. The Bradford pear blossoms have all but disappeared, but now, look, it's the red bud's turn, and they're beautiful. The crab apple, the lilacs are just starting to burst open, and soon, my favorite flower of all, the iris. I like them so much, I used to eat them as a child. <laughs> One can easily say that Easter morning is the peak experience of the whole church year. There's Easter brunch that we enjoy, uh, oh, delicious egg casseroles and French toast, especially like the French toast this year, provided by the youth group and the volunteers. There's the egg hunt, uh, children bringing their baskets and an education team providing uh, wonderful surprises for them. There's uh, the worship team who provides a beautiful worship space visually for us to worship in. The choirs, the chancel, the handbell, the children's uh, kids' handbell choirs are at the top of their game. And there are more worshipers sitting in the pews than at any other time of the year. It's quite a grand occasion. But on Easter morning, we witnessed the biggest transformation of all. And that is the Gospels report to us the good news that Jesus is alive and that death has been transformed into life. The message of Easter is no matter what darkness, be it death or sadness, a heart or an attitude that refuses to change, be it injustice or prejudice, be it apathy or unbelief, God can overcome it. Church, all of us are here, empowered to triumph over the darkness that fills our lives and the lives of people in our community. We are here to hope. We are here to be raised to new life and to be transformed. That's good news. And the season and the stories of Easter call us to embark on this never-ending journey of grace and adventure in which time and eternity are totally and radically new and open to us. We are called to awaken to a new vision of life and life around us, a vision that includes God and each other in every moment of every day, in every breath that we take, a breath and a moment that's committed to shaping the faith of, and the fabric of our future and the health of our planet. Okay, so what happens when Easter is over? Because indeed, it's over. What happens when the pews are no longer filled? They're pretty good today. This is a good attendance today, so, you know, we don't have to totally lose hope. But in a number of churches today, there are a lot of empty pews. Normal life is grasping us once again, the normal routines of life. And that's the key, the key question once we have encountered a peak experience. It always happens regardless of Easter or any other time of the year when we've had one of those God moments or those aha moments. What happens when we come back to her? What happens? We're entering graduation season. What happens Graduates, uh, when the college and high school seniors find themselves thrown out into the larger world, adjusting to a new job or a different school is frightening, it's intimidating as we, as we leave behind 
our friends, the familiar faces and places that have been ours for a time. What happens after that awesome summer vacation with family and friends and it's once again time to resume the tedious routine of work and life? What happens after that powerful experience at Camp Kalea when our young campers experience the transform transforming presence of the Spirit as they sit around a Vespers campfire and cook s'mores and share stories? How do we connect those transforming experiences, those aha moments, to the days that follow? is the key question of Easter. The challenge is to gracefully move from those peak experiences into the routine of normal, everyday life. But to somehow weave those moments, those peak experiences, into our everyday routine so that our lives will be forever changed. Like Mary Magdalene, like Peter, like Thomas, like Paul, and others who saw a new vision and felt the energy of Jesus' hands and body and voice flow from his life into theirs so that they could become the agents of Christ's transformation and healing, wholeness, and love. Today's lesson from the Gospel of John, chapter 21, verses 1 through 14, takes place after Jesus' death and resurrection. Another resurrection story. The disciples have left Jerusalem and they've made their way back to their homes in Galilee. And there's a sense that the intensity and the excitement of what has been a part of, of their life those last few weeks and during the crucifixion of Jesus, there's a sense and resurrection. There's a sense that that, that time has begun to fade into the past. And Peter says, very normal everyday routine words, I'm going to go fishing. And the other disciples share Peter's response and say, Yeah, Peter, we'll come too. It appears that they take up life where they left off, before they met Jesus. It appears that no transformation has taken place. They're back home. They're back on the sea. They're back fishing. You know, all of those long, exhausting days of following Jesus, of listening to his teaching, of, of thinking we're going to be the, the change agents in the world, we're going to overthrow Rome and restore peace and civility back to the Galilean population. No, they're fishing. However, Simon, Peter, and the other disciples will soon discover that they cannot return to their old, familiar, pre-Easter world. At dawn on the Sea of Galilee, the risen Jesus appeared among them. And the disciples failed to recognize him. Why would they? It's a theme that runs, however, throughout the Gospel of John, disbelief or unbelief. It's one of the key themes of this Gospel. Jesus informs Peter and the disciples how to fish. And when they listen to him, there is a huge catch. Then, Peter opens his eyes and recognizes Jesus as with them. For John, the Gospel writer, this is a Eucharistic moment. This is a moment of communion. Jesus comes, he takes bread, he breaks it, and he gives it to them, and he did the same with the fish. For the early church, it wasn't wine and bread, it was fish and bread. And we see that on the, on the early frescoes and mosaics uh, painted on the catacomb walls, it's 
fish and bread. So church, today we're serving sardines. <coughs> Easter announces this amazing news of resurrection. This new life lived in the way of Jesus Christ. And now the challenge is, the challenge is for us, church, it's for us as individuals, but it's also for us as a community. How do we integrate the message of resurrection and new life into the routine of our everyday lives? How do we do that? How do we live the new vision that Jesus came to proclaim? God calls us. We are no different than the disciples. God calls us to be disciples of Jesus Christ into a broken and sometimes dangerous world. And we are just called to go there and to trust, and to have courage, and perseverance. Maybe it's the journey with an illness, a terminal illness. Maybe it's the journey of uh, a new job because we've lost our old one or been fired. Maybe it's the journey of divorce and starting all over again. Maybe it's the journey of losing everything that we have and trying to pick ourselves up from the bootstraps and to make a new life. Church, the world so desperately needs to hear the good news of resurrection and hope. That we are transformed, that we live by a new vision, that change is a part of our daily living and that we can take hold of that change and God will not let us go. <coughs> and that change can transform our present and carry us into the future with all of the hope and life that God has for us. Like Peter and the disciples who went fishing on the Sea of Galilee, we must believe the presence of Jesus comes to us. And if we don't find or feel or hear that presence out there in everyday life, then come here on Sunday mornings and prepare to meet Jesus here at the table where bread and wine is offered. And then, church, let us hear the voice of Jesus calling us to look for the ways and the opportunities to care for the world and for people that God loves so well. Remember, remember this, we can't, we can't change the world in a day but we can transform the world one moment and one encounter at a time. Remember that. One moment and one encounter can bring life to someone in ways that are unimaginable to us. May Christ be a part of your daily moments and each encounter that you have with the other. Then, Easter will live 